Mike, uh, coming off of yesterday, what's the challenge now with five of the next seven on the road? Oh, Teresa, I would have no idea how many we have on the road. I know we have the next one on the road. Um, but the challenge is the same. The challenge is the same whether you win or you lose. You have to uh, regroup, figure out what you did good, what you did bad, and, and try to eliminate the things that get you beat. And that's, that's what we're going to do. And the challenge is getting ready for another opponent, an excellent opponent on the road on Monday night. <clears throat> hey, what were the main things that got you, got you beat yesterday? Um, well, you look at, you know, the, the run defense, you know, things that we, you know, when we are playing the game well and we, we are uh, operating how I think we should operate, you know, we're running the football, we're stopping the run. Our quarterback's efficient. Uh, we affect their quarterback. You know, neither of those two things did we win those matchups, uh, won, won the turnover matchup. But, uh, you know, I felt like we did um, well enough in some of these critical situations, especially at the end of the game, to put ourselves in a position. But that, that in the end, really was, was what got us, was just not being able to control the football, you know, and then the, the X plays that we gave up, those big plays uh, on defense. And, you know, we still need to try to make sure that we're finishing some drives off. Um, third down wasn't good enough. Too many three and outs to start the second half. It seemed like as soon as <clears throat> you got the completion to Phillips, you were satisfied with the field position for the field goal and were more concerned with moving horizontally than vertically. Couldn't you have used more yards there? Well, we could always use more yards. I'm comfortable, and I've, and I've gone into saying this, that at the 25-yard line, um, I've told the team this, that we're going to kick the field goal. No, we were... 26, 27, I wanted to be very clear what hash we wanted it on. I explained that last night. Um, I, I'm not disappointed in how that situation happened. I'm disappointed uh, that a guy that we have a lot of confidence in missed. Randy's disappointed, but uh, he's made a lot of big kicks for us. So, um, you know, it's a situation that we've actually covered, covered in the summer. Um, had 18 seconds on the clock, had no timeouts. You know, Randy wanted it on the right hash. So we put it on the right hash, got lined up, calmly clocked the ball, and and then unfortunately missed the kick. Hurting the timeout after you were out of bounds, are guys milling around too much there? No, after? again, that was me just being very clear on where we wanted the, um, you know, where we wanted the football. You know, was it the left hash? Was it the right hash? It's this a game winner. We want to make sure that everybody was on the same page. That's that was my decision. How much does that change? It, it does. I think it actually uh, changes sometimes during the game based on the wind and based on how he feels, um, which direction we're headed. So there was actually, you know, a conversation. And I wanted to make sure that, that there wasn't any indecision in what, uh, what we were telling Ryan where we wanted the football. Like beyond the jig run that we asked about yesterday, the third and short failures in general in the second half, any common threads there? How, how disappointing was that for you? Well, that's something that we've been – you know, really good at and that we're going to continue to be really good at. That was, um, you know, disappointing. You know what I mean? We, we had done well enough on first and second down to, to eliminate some of those third and extra longs that we were just, you know, are hard to pick up and protect and all those different things. Um, so we'll have to make sure that we're giving these guys a great plan. We're giving the quarterback plenty of options uh, for the looks that we're thinking that we may see or not see. And... Um, and be better, you know. The the one, you know, I thought we did a fantastic job with the with the man coverage early in the game. We had, um, you know, Bobby in the backfield and Ryan progressed through, and they kind of dropped Dontrell, and then we started seeing some more zone, probably because of that. Uh, and I think that we just have to make sure that we're adjusting to some of those things that that happened through the course of the game. With the committee approach or collective approach as a receiver core as opposed to like one dominant guy, like how much stress does that put on you as a play caller or Coach Down and Coach Kelly as, as, you know, people who go into making the offense tick? Well, I don't think – I mean, I think we all have uh, – everybody in this building, I think we have, um, you know, there's stress involved in everybody's job, whether you're a player, or a coach, a trainer. Uh, just to try to get the players ready to go out there and understand what's going on. And uh, I don't, you know, we have confidence in everybody out there. So, you know, we have some certain plays where you may want a guy at one position. But other than that, you know, just like, you know, Cody went in there the other day and, you know, we, we threw a, you know, threw a boot to him that gained 
18 or however many yards it did down there in the red zone. So, you know, I thought he did a nice job. I thought he got kept both feet in bounds and you know, whatever that is that the guy's numbers called, then you know, we'll go out and make it work. You know, with, with so many teams focusing on Derrick Henry, does it become more important, like for someone? They to focused on thing? Derrick since you know the last three years or whatever that may be. That's not the nothing's changed there. You know, we left a lot of meat on the bone uh, running a football. That's okay. Do you need more touches from Woods and Hooper, or do they have to earn more touches? Well, I've been through this and I've tried to explain it as best as I can to the team specifically. If you're a receiver or you're a tight end or you're, you know, maybe not a running back, but if you're out in the route, like all you can focus on is that you get open. And then the quarterback has to determine like where he goes with the football. And, you know, we always watch and we say, oh, that guy's open on the right. Well, the read and the progression starts over here and it's a yes, no. And you only have so much time. You can't start here and then think, oh, I'm going to come back as pressure's coming or, you know, that, that's the thing I think we lose sight of. So, yeah, we want everybody that's open to get the football. And, you know, is Ryan going to say, yeah, I probably should have to rip the sit to, to hoop, um, you know, down there in the high red? Probably. But, you know, I thought we were efficient in the play pass game. You know, we had some of those X plays. We're going to continue to work with, with Traylon uh, about continuing to run. And, and not, you know, continue his speed down the field as he's trying to locate the ball. I think that came up. But, I mean, our young guys played good, man. Like, I'm, like these guys, they went out there. We had some rookies that started. I mean, that's the most production that we've had from, from young guys. Uh, Traylon caught the ball well. He blocked. Uh, you know, we'll start maybe seeing if he can make somebody miss an open field instead of trying to run them over. But, you know, we'll – We'll try to get you know the quarterback to get the guy the ball that's open. You know the guy to get him the ball when he's open. How would you say the protection was yesterday? Because no sacks allowed. Petit Ferrer seemed to be very engaging and locking up his guy, and didn't seem to need a whole lot of extra help. Even with Swaim and Hoop, the time you know Jeff did a nice job on some of the defensive ends that we had him blocking in, in the play pass, which we know can be you know hit or miss. So I thought the protection was good. There was some you know always a couple times where. You know, they run a game where there was some leakage. But um, overall, I thought it was it was good. You know, there was some good pockets, some very good pockets. You know, our sack came on a on a boot that Ryan didn't gain any yards on. So um, all in all, I think that it was, you know, did some positive things up front. Flash may be trying to run around too many blocks. And, and well, I think that there's always, you know, there's, there's three ways that you can get to the ball you, under, over, or through. And as Zach has shown in the past that, you know, he can do all three of those. That's why he's such an intriguing player. Um, so, you know, I mean, I th it, one thing to look at is where the ball is, where the blocker is. You know, there are some times where if the ball is, you know, further away from, from the blocker that you can dip and avoid and, and, and try to, you know, beat them. So those are decisions just like with Derek with running the football. You know, you have to, you know, you, coach him up and hope that they make the right decision to make the right read, whether he's going to slip underneath the block or, you know, take it on and, and try to shed. On the meat of the ball was left on the running game, Mike, how much of that was left by Derek himself? I think probably some, you know, some. There was, again, we're all in it uh, out there, and we, we have to have a play design. Uh, sometimes Derek bounces, makes a huge play. Sometimes he sticks it up inside and, you know, gets a couple dirty yards. So we've always trusted him with the football uh, to go, and that's why I tell those guys to finish longer than the guy with the ball. And sometimes we've seen him break it out and make magic happen, and sometimes it's a you know one or two yard gain. So the that's what we've entrusted him to do, and that's why he's our running back, and that's why we you know rely heavily on him. The two conversion <clears throat> were. Were guys in the right spot just didn't make a play, or did did you get out of? No, I think we had a couple guys there. You know, we had a couple guys there, and Saquon made a play. was held in that play, Mike. Uh, I think that there's a lot of things that I think they had 12 men on the field when we punted the football too. But I'm, I, that's beside the point. Every, every 
play was different, but the, the consistency in the run defense was it more missed tackling? Maybe guys probably were... more. We had you know double digits. Um, you know some of the fits. You know making sure that you know we go you know, that there's an edge, that there's a wall, and and that you're swarming. And so sometimes when they get some pullers over the edge, uh, you have secondary players that then become force players, right? So that we have to. You know, make sure that we're forcing it and that we're, you know, getting the right guys at the right angles. Mike, on Woods, on Woods and <clears throat> Hooper again, you, you mentioned how, you know, they, they as pass catchers, you can't really control when you're getting the ball. But um, in terms of even though they, they didn't really get the ball, did, were you pleased with kind of what they were doing away from the ball, blocking? Did, were you encouraged in that regard in terms of them doing – their job to, to get open and, and block and doing all that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, again, we lost the game, so nobody really um, played well enough or coached well enough, and that's that's how we want to approach it. Um, everybody, I would say, that was involved in the game did some of those things that were really positive, and then some of the things that we just need to correct and make sure that we fix, whether it's you know how we're running a route, how we're blocking, how we're taking on blocks. Um, you know, just it's a big week for us, and, and we're going to use the extra day, hopefully, to try to take care of some fundamentals and look at some things that come up and, and try to be very specific. Rashad, <clears throat> you've been here before. I mean, you've had disappointing losses and faced a big opponent coming off of it. Every loss is disappointing. Every loss is disappointing. I mean, we put a lot into it. Um, you know, and we've and we've done that to other teams, and I guess that's why it 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 hurts. And it's frustrating and disappointing and a million different things. But you know, walk in, and talk to the team, and tell them, you know, this is you know, we got off to the start we wanted. This is what we were doing well. Um, came out, you know, second half, sky kick. You know, we start backed up. We go three and out to start, and you know, just really never did enough in the second half to take control of the momentum. Um, you know, proud of the way that we fought. You know, unfortunately, just came up short. Well, in these situations, though, I mean, I, and I and I'm and I'm proud of that. I'm proud of the the players that they understand. Um, I think they keep everything in perspective. I think they do do a good job of keeping things in perspective. So, I'm going to try to do that and help them. Athletics were pretty complimentary of Traylon, his ability to create separation last night. Is that something that popped on the tape? Maybe more so than it did in the preseason games or some of the other times you've seen him in game action. Um, I, I think he did, you know, s some things really well. You know, he had some things that uh, he needs to get corrected. Um, but when we asked him to block, he went in there and he was willing. Um, talked to you about his, uh, you know, his efforts on the kickoff return and how much those coaches wanted him in, in that phase. Now he got a holding penalty, but it was also against, you know, probably their best special teams player. And uh, he, he stood in there. And he didn't back down. He didn't flinch. Uh, he got set, hit him, tried to block him, and just you know a tug. So the separation. Um, I, I just hope that he continues to try to develop and catch the ball and and, and find ways to help us. How much better have your guys gotten up front at mirroring the hand to to bat passes down, and and uh, how much has that helped you? That will always help us. Um, you know, I think Jeff will probably be kicking himself. He tried to do it, but he jumped, and Daniel Jones was able to, you know, put it in there on one of the third downs. Uh, but he was trying. Jeff was clearly chasing him and, and, and kind of went to match the hand and, and left his feet a little bit. But Strong came up with a big one uh, at, a, at a huge point, uh, third down. Uh, you know, we, we just didn't have enough attempts, whether that was at the line of scrimmage or, you know, with, with the ball carrier. Weaver's uh, solid play in preseason seemed to carry over the two sacks. How do you do setting the, setting the edge in the run game? It, it, there was, again, there was a couple really nice ones where he got two blockers, some of those pullers over the edge. Um, and then there was another one where, you know, he could have been better, and he knows that, and, you know, we'll try to explain it to him and show him. Um, but, you know, he, he did, did well. Not good enough for us to win collectively, but you know I think that he continues to work, and I think he's trying to take advantage of the opportunity. He's excited to be out there. He's into it, and, and he plays hard. Is that aspect of the game sometimes more difficult for a guy who's 
strong suit is rushing the passer, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of edge guys? Well, I think there's just some patience that's involved with it. You know, whether that be he or Danico, you know, you're, you, the, the defensive players, you always want to make a bunch of plays, right? We just ask you that you make the ones that you're supposed to make because um, there has to be some sort of responsibility. There has to be some sort of semblance to order and what's going on. And so, you know, I think that there is a fine line of winning, you know, we talked about Zach Cunningham running around a block or when you just get rid of somebody soon instead of waiting and then losing a speed battle to, to a very good back. Mike, this team was 6-1 and one last year in games decided by three or fewer points. Is that kind of a toughness or mentality that has to be relearned year to year? Or is there any kind of carryover that maybe you can try to tap into? Uh, there may be some carryover. I mean, it's just understanding the situations, right? We were pretty confident uh, that they scored, that they were going to go for two being on the road, a lot of different factors. Um, the way that the game was going um, left us enough time. Our offense went back. We missed a kick at the end. We have been good. I'm proud of the fact that we have been good in, in one score games. Um, not so good yesterday, but you know we just have to do a better job of, of coming out of that second half and uh, taking control of the game again and, and, not, and not making it to the point where it, it comes down to a, you know, a, a few plays there at the end. Did AJ Moore cost you anything from a personal stand, personnel standpoint yesterday? Well, he's a you know he's a solid, very solid special teams contributor, um, continuing to build a role on on defense. But his passion, his speed, and in, in, in what we were doing, I thought our special teams units, you know, Trey Avery. What it did was give Trey Avery an opportunity. Another young guy had one tackle, two assists, never played L5 on a kickoff team in his life, ran in there, ran down the middle of the field, um, hit the off returner, and, and made a tackle. So that's usually what happens is one guy that's not available and somebody else is, and we, we like when they take advantage of the opportunity. For your nickel package, uh, you know, featuring Ugo Amadi, is there something you like more about him as opposed to having – McCreary bump inside and Farley uh, filling at that outside corner spot? Well, there's a lot of banging around that goes in there. Amadi's done it much more uh, in this league uh, than, than, you know, Roger. So just trying not to overload him um, inside, outside, run game. There's some different run fits that are associated in there. It's really a, a modified uh, linebacker. And, um, you know, Roger just – Right now, it's not that he doesn't want to go in there and mix it up because he tackled well at times yesterday and tried to tackle physically. But um, I, I think it's just, you know, right now we're working him on third down in there. So that's Mike, not as is, much of an indictment on Farley himself as it is just trying to. Oh, no, it's just okay. first and second down. Um, you know, uh, when we go nickel or when we go we substitute a defense, it's first and second down just trying to get. You know, guy in there at the nickel uh, that's done it, and, you know, that's it. How rare is it, Mike, when you see a, a rookie like Silva <coughs> get the target share that he did in his first NFL game? And is that kind of a sign of the trust that uh, Ryan already has in him? He's got a lot of trust. You know, you saw a great punt return, um, a, a great effort from him, a lot of great efforts from from other guys out there. And then, the you know, it didn't come without – it wasn't perfect, you know, because then the – you know, we muffed one, but, but Kyle is a competitor. Um, he's got a knack for getting open. And so Ryan was able to find him a couple of times you know, yesterday. Some of, the balls, of, some of the balls he caught on punt return, uh, I, I got to believe you don't want him catching some of those inside the 10, inside the five, the way he did. Well, inside the five, you're starting to get a little bit dicey. But that eight-yard line is usually probably the um, – you know, the break point, just because the punters are so good to, to be able to, to pin you uh, inside the, the five-yard line. So, you know, just making good decisions down there and, and, and obviously um, hoping that we can keep that a strength and just clean up the, the ball security. The play inside the 10 in the first half, Mike, run fake to Derek. Does that ball just need to be right to Derek quickly? We, we need to allow him to turn it Yeah, up? I'm not going to get through the scheme of it, but, you know, we just – I would say that there's everybody involved has to be better, you know, and just make sure that we're 
we're firm and, and solid on where we want to go with the ball and how we want that route to, to get there. Regarding what? the run defense, Mike, last week or like yesterday, you said that we need to reevaluate <clears throat> what we're doing since that was the number one key we had. How do you go about doing that, specifically if it was the number one key and it ended up the way it was? Well, every week's different. You know, every week's different. This may be a different running scheme. You know, they showed a few things in their first week uh, that, that Buffalo hadn't shown last week so or last year. We'll figure out what the scheme is and, um, and and try to come up with ways to to defend it. It really just came down to the to the X plays, you know, the explosive gains um, that really changed momentum, changes field position. Um, you got to make them earn everything in this league. You just can't give them big plays. How long time has it been in your tenure that the number one key? You guys have come up so short in the number one thing you've talked about during the week. Well, there's been a couple of times. I mean, I am not I can't go back. I mean, you can check with stretch, but I'm sure there's been some times like, you know, we needed to do something and you know, didn't do it. You know, you can go out there and you can have eighty percent of the snaps, you know, be for three yards or less and then give up a couple big plays, which is, you know, what we did and quarterback add the quarterback scramble into that and you know, a jet sweep into that. And, you know, so if the quarterback runs for 15 yards, you know, at the end of a two minute drill that you know, we end up stopping them on, you know, it's going to go into a rushing. But at the end of the day, it was, you know, just some of those big plays. How big a challenge you have a week, how big a challenge you have a week from the night and the past games against them help you a little bit in preparation? Well, I'm sure it would, you know, help a little bit. Every year is different. Uh, it's an excellent defense. Um, Put a lot of pressure on the other night. Um, you know, very sound. They're good tacklers. You know, you just watch that game. They they tackled very well. Um, offensively, they were able to break tackles. You know, the quarterback is is, is very good. Got a lot of respect for for Josh and what he does and the command that he has, his his toughness, his physicality, and, and not only that, but just his his arm talent. So. It's a, it's a huge challenge, um, you know, on the road. Mike, what has Jeff Swaim done to earn the role on offense that, that he has? He led the tight ends in, in snaps yesterday. Yeah, he block, he's, he's the best blocking tight end that we have. 